this unit, we've already talked about the idea of something called line symmetry. We're going to carry that idea one step further and now integrate our talk about rotations with the discussion that we had about symmetry earlier in the unit. So first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about point symmetry. The book definition of point symmetry says that it exists when a figure is built around a single point that's called the center of that figure. And for every point in the figure, there's going to be another point found directly opposite uh, that point, but on the other side of the center. So that's the book definition of point symmetry. The Mrs. McCann definition says a figure has point symmetry when it looks upside down exactly the same as it does right side up. So that's how I would describe point symmetry. How can you tell when a figure has point symmetry? Well, if it's, it's just exactly the same upside down as it is right side up, then it has point symmetry. If it doesn't look exactly the same upside down as it is right side up, then there exists no point symmetry. Another kind of fancy mathematical idea that we might talk about, we might say that a figure with point symmetry remains unchanged by a rotation of 180 degrees. All right, so here at the middle of the page, it says circle the shapes or words that have point symmetry. If you're doing this correctly at home, your paper is going to go back and forth, upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up. So I do want you to take a minute, pause the video, go flip upside down and right side up. And if they're the same upside down as they are right side up, they have point symmetry and you can circle them. Otherwise, just leave them alone. All right, so when I flip my paper upside down, the two that I found that were exactly the same, in other words, unchanged in appearance, were the word noon and that jack of spades. Same upside down as they were right side up. So that's the whole idea or notion of point symmetry. Now we're going to talk rotational symmetry. Point symmetry actually is a form of rotational symmetry. But we say that rotational symmetry exists if there's a center point about which, we can, about which we can rotate our figure with some number of degrees between but not including 0 and 360, where it will again appear exactly the same as the original. We're not going to include the angles of 0 degrees and 360 degrees because they're the same as the original. Nothing new is happening or going on. The order of rotational symmetry is going to be the number of positions in which the object remains exactly the same. When determining the order, the last rotation, which will return the object to its original position, is not counted. An order of one is going to have no true rotational symmetry since it requires a full 360 degree rotation in order to map the figure onto itself. All right, so that's kind of a mouthful. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like when we apply it to some problems. I'm actually going to start on the, on the right-hand side of this page with the letter H, and I'm going to work there, or work from the right first. So the letter H, does this figure have rotational symmetry? In other words, can I take it and turn it in such a way that it will appear exactly the same as it did in the original position? And the answer to that is yes. If I flip the letter H upside down, he's going to have point symmetry, and point symmetry really is rotational symmetry of 180 degrees. So this fella has 180 degree rotational symmetry because again, when I rotate him or turn him 180 degrees about that center point in the middle of the H, he's going to appear exactly the same as he did when he started. All right, so I guess I have to go back now. Does he have rotational symmetry? We've already decided that, yes, he does have rotational symmetry. The number of degrees that are required to map him onto himself, 180 degrees. In the order, since he looks exactly the same upside down as he does right side up, there are two positions in which he appears unchanged, making his order two. All right, the next one I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at that arrow. And like the letter H, if I turn him a complete 180 degrees, he's going to appear exactly the same upside down as he did right side up. So yes, like the letter H, I would conclude that he has rotational symmetry. Not only does he have rotational symmetry, it will require 180 degrees of rotation about that middle center point in order to map him onto himself. 
And because he appears exactly the same upside down as he does right side up, there are two positions in which he remains unchanged, making his order two. All right, and I'm still moving ahead from the right side. Now I'm going to take a look at that blue trapezoid. And I'm going to ask myself, is there some way that I can rotate this fella about his center so that after some number of degrees of rotation, he'll appear unchanged? In other words, nothing will have, uh, nothing will have changed. Nothing will be different. Or you might say, I could map him onto himself. Well, in order to get him to map back onto himself and to have him be unchanged, I'm going to require a full 360 degrees of rotation here. So for that reason, since we require a full 360 degrees to get right back to where we started, he does not have rotational symmetry. It will require a full 360 degrees to map him back onto himself. And since he appears exactly the same in only one position, his order is one. All right, and then the last one we need to talk about is that octagon on the end. He is a regular octagon, meaning that all of his sides are the same and all of his angles are the same. And again, what we're looking for is we're looking for some number of degrees that we could rotate him or turn him about that center point so that he's going to map exactly onto himself, meaning that he appears to be unchanged. So in other words, when I rotate him, if I want this line segment that I just made blue up at the top, with the first turn, I'm going to map the blue line segment onto the green line segment. And if I count up those line segments, there are exactly eight of them in an octagon. And considering that a full rotation would be a complete 360 degrees, I want to go exactly one-eighth of a rotation. So I want to take that 360 degrees, divide it up equally amongst the eight sides, and when I divide the 360 by eight, I find out that one-eighth of the 360 degrees would be 45 degrees. So yes, he does have rotational symmetry. The smallest number of degrees, which I have to turn him so that he will map onto himself, is 45 degrees. But then I could also include all multiples of 45 degrees up to, but not including, 360. So I could turn him 45 degrees, making him map onto himself, 90 degrees, which would cause him to map onto himself, 135 degrees which would cause the image to coincide with the pre-image. I could rotate him 180 degrees, so on and so forth. Again, it's going to be all the multiples of 45 degrees. And then lastly, the last rotation that I'll turn him back onto himself is 360 degrees. So because there are eight positions in which that octagon will appear unchanged or in which he will map onto himself, we say that his order is eight. All right, like always, up at the top of the next page, key ideas, important understandings, things that you need to take away with you from this video. If you have questions about anything that I mentioned in the video, now this would be a really good place to jot them down so that you can remember to ask about them the next time that you come to class. And then in two and three on the next page, some of these are going to ask you about rotational symmetry and point symmetry, which are from the video that you just saw. But they're also asking you to recall some ideas from line symmetry, which we saw earlier in the unit. So if you need to, take some time to revisit the video on line symmetry so you can recall the key ideas from that video.